everyone. How you been? That's great. Uh, we are on to the third episode of Holesworthy Live where something amazing has happened in the Orient that <laughs> occurred. Orient. <laughs> it's a great word. Yeah. Everybody needs to start calling Asians Orientals. And if you find that offensive, don't write it in the comments section. Don't spoil our fun. Yeah. We're going back to this. Yeah. Orient, it makes you sound more baller. What? Than Asian. Asian reminds me of like uh, but, owning yeah. shoes that have like uh, those little red lights on the <laughs> <laughs> Where you go, man, I Orient. did get those when I was a kid. Exactly. I love them. <laughs> if you are an Oriental man, most of your clothes are silk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just that, a better place to be. the whole point why they said that Orient wasn't a good word? Because like it comes up with all the dim stereotypes that are just not valid. But there's so much better than the stereotypes yeah, you exactly. guys have now. What is it? Like being good at maths and being shit at driving. That's the stereotypes <laughs> that is like made with Asians. Being an Oriental man, what is it? Yeah, okay, you, you have a crack pipe. That's, that's one of them that like, sucks. But on top of that, silk. And a wise man beard. That's Plus, yeah. yeah okay. On top of that, yeah, you, you definitely uh, own a house in a mountain that, admittedly, is uh, very small. But wow, what a view! <laughs> yeah, what a view! <laughs> and like amazing dumplings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's both. Yeah, that three out of four ain't bad. <laughs> and so that's why we're going to discuss Korea. Is pretty much so we can talk about the Oregon's, uh, because as Ali has been looking into it. When I first started looking into it, because I just saw at the bottom of one of those tickers, you know, it was just as every single news show on the planet is just turned into, okay, so this is now Trump Watch 24 7. <laughs> and then at the bottom it just goes, oh, and by the way, the South Korean president has been impeached. Or like millions, like within a millions of people out on the streets, just like right at the bottom, and then uh, like Trump all over the freaking page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, insane. Yeah. Like, the South, what's happened? <laughs> There's more to the world than just Trump. <laughs> I know. And then they gave all of those not my president rallies. Yeah. 10,000 people. While that was happening, there was 2 million Koreans <laughs> marching on the street about President Park and how she needs to go. And the main reason they want her to go, this is what I heard anyway, and then Ali goes to, that's such a childish observation. <laughs> but, dig this. Here's the ghost. Apparently, she's nuts. The president of <laughs> the president of South Korea thinks that there is this religious entity that owns her mind, body, and spirit, and so on every every single decision that she has to make. And we're talking decisions with North Korea here. She consults this guy that has no qualifications at all. Sorry, it's a girl. She. Uh, zero qualifications to make any decisions whatsoever apart from the fact that she owns the president's soul and so she just it's it's a it's a millhouse bart situation really <laughs> she just needs it back yeah. and so she's been putting all of all of those very selfish if you think about it what's one soul in the scheme of millions she's been prioritizing that over the top of it by saying every with every one of them should we should we retreat from the sunshine policy should we stop giving aid to north korea and then she just like looking at a bunch of tea leaves this is medieval stuff that's happening in 2016 korea which is so weird because when you walk around there that every, every pretty much every planet uh, every every building has turned into those shoes that light up when you go to walk around. That's most of the buildings there that just keep going like blue, green, yeah, all the colours of the rainbow because you can't see the sky. It's really shitty atmosphere. If you thought China was bad, it's way worse than Korea. I'd much rather live in Korea. Uh, so that's the that's the nut of it. That's why everybody's protesting on the streets. Yeah. But you heard that there's more to the story. Well, I don't I, believe it. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with I, wizards. It's it's like it's it's three parts. So initially, the first issue that Jordan's actually talking about is is, is sort of uh, it's somewhat accurate. correct. So the the current president of Korea, uh, Miss Park, is the daughter of General Park, who was the dictator of Korea for about two decades. Some somewhere around that time. Why and would you want a dictator's kid 
as a democratically elected president. She's got experience, man. She's got, but she, well, she does actually has experience. So she, her mother uh, died while uh, her dad was in office, so she by default became like the first lady. So she has that experience. But Korean That's conservatives. What there. <laughs> yes, it's it's kind of weird. She was also like the the first lady and the first daughter at the same time. It's it's sort of bizarre. But um, yeah, yeah. But Ancient societies are very creepy. <laughs> but, and we will move on. <laughs> but like the conservatives of Korea actually think that that dictator was mad, because considering that the, he did take them towards like economic revival or not even revival, economic build up of Korea. Yeah, they went from being poorer than Ethiopia after yeah. the Korean War to being richer than us. Yeah, that's it's the size of Tasmania. It's got nothing. We've got a fuckload of iron ore. What's going on there? <laughs> so yeah, that that's so the conservatives actually think that that General Park was a mad character. So that's yeah, why, actually good yeah. on it. Yep. So that's why um, her daughter is now in power. So the the, the official story goes like uh, General Park had a friend who was sort of like a um, a cult leader um, for like um, like a fortune teller. For lack of a better way of actually looking at it, but it's he was for him. yeah, he, it's essentially a cult leader. So they were they were both friends, and then while um, so Korean White House is called the Blue House, very creative. So it's um, so in the Blue House. That's while, right. Yeah, yeah, I have seen it. Yeah. It is blue. It is blue, and it's good. so uh, the, when the the General Park's daughter was in the Blue House, the the friend, the cult leader's daughter, and her became friends. And then eventually, obviously, the older generation passed away, and then she became the president. But she was also close to this, you know, this, this, and not even a legit cult leader anymore, an heir of a legit cult leader. And the, Co the Korean people basically think that she, um, she's being influenced by someone that is uh, clearly not qualified enough to give her advice on anything. Is there a supernatural element to it? Do they, they legitimately think that this person has? Superpowers and is influencing her. I don't. I don't know. Dimension of pure evil. That's look. That's speculation. I don't know what they <laughs> think. Oh, Koreans I don't want to will, get into that. Liberal Koreans who are protesting on the streets will probably say that she, the, uh, President Park thinks that she has some sort of supernatural powers. I don't know. But what and I, I bet do you the know conservatives is, also think, yeah, she's got supernatural powers. Leave her in. <laughs> yeah. Why would you want to get rid of that? <laughs> maybe, maybe. If there was a guy that could fly in <laughs> Australia. Just make it, just Governor General, sign him up. Don't you reckon? That guy should be the Prime Minister. Doesn't matter if he has zero experience whatsoever. The point is, he doesn't need a plane. We can cut back on having our version of Air Force One. We don't need it. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but, but, but what we do know is that um, she, so this, this, this cult leader lady who is friends with the President has uh, charitable, charitable foundations and the big companies like Samsung have actually donated to these uh, foundations. So the, the the criticism or the case against the president is that you allowed her to use uh, powers uh, for personal gain. So hence, she is obviously complicit, but she went to jail a long time ago when the protest started. And then I don't know, don't you just expect that to happen? I don't know why you'd be so outraged. If I heard that this yeah, yeah. guy got, I'd be, I'd be thinking, yeah, that's why I'm president saying once, take advantage of it. Which is true, like, it's it's more common than you would think. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but it, it's a lot more common than you would think. And that's why I'm saying that it's not just about that. So now we come to the second part of what has led up to these protests. Uh, the second part is, which I think mainstream media has also acknowledged, is uh, in 2014 there was a ferry that capsized. It carried mostly secondary and primary school children. Um, it, was, it was a disaster. And You know what else happened with that? Yeah. The exact opposite of the Titanic. The captain did not go down with that shit. <laughs> Instead, he told a bunch of school kids, Oh, everything's alright, just go back to your cabins and stay in there. Because Koreans are just like, oh, okay, to any form of authority at all. Even with planes, apparently Korean airline planes used to crash all the time and everyone used to think, well, it's the 80s and Korea was what China is now. It just makes like real... Like, instead of having uh, Sony, they'd come up with products like Shenyo. <laughs> Jeez, like yeah. that kind of that kind of thing, and then yeah. So the, apparently, yeah, Koreans would ask people in LA, "Can we just land now?" And they'd say, "No, there's too much traffic." And other pilots would say, "You don't understand. We don't have any fuel. We're going to land." And they go, "Oh, okay." And they just keep flying until the plane crashed. <laughs> Such polite people. <laughs> and that's what happened in this capsize. Is all the kids just yeah. went, "Oh, okay." 
and they drowned. Yeah. And then the captain took one of the emergency boats and just went meh, 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 by himself. He did some extra shit. <laughs> um. So that was that was a disaster. And what happened was that the initial response to that um, capsizing wasn't very good. Apparently, the story goes that uh, the president, who was uh, Miss Park, um. Uh, could, like she was pretty much MIA for eight nine hours. Now, and one of those hours, one of those hours, she was doing her hair. Again, these are these are these stories that I I, I don't think I can confirm. Maybe she was. Who knows? Like you I never know. know I was talking to a guy from South Korea. Ma well, Better source than yeah. You. Well, they they're they're protesting against her at the moment. So um, <laughs> I, that, that might be true. Her. I'm not saying he's he's wrong. <laughs> that might be true. But so that, but again, like I know this might be a very unpopular thing to say at the moment, especially if a Korean is listening. Like the president is like you can't micromanage to an extent. So like the initial response to the ferry capsizing was bad, but like it's sort of useless to blame the president for it, considering that she wasn't going to go out on an emergency boat to save those kids. You know what I mean? Like there's a process of how these things are handled. Either way, it didn't go. That brought her uh, popularity to a nosedive, and that's when the conservatives who did support her also um, started, she started losing support from them. But that seems uh, kind of like uh, the ancient Mayans blaming the emperor when there was a bad crop season. Yeah. Except, uh, how is that her fault at all? Uh, well, I mean, I've, yeah. I've heard stories about Ms. Park. Believe me, she she ain't good news. <laughs> but uh, like that, come on. It's just like when everybody was just like, "That's it, Tony Abbott ate a raw onion, disgusting," and he went down like five points in popularity. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Yeah, this guy doesn't reflect Australian values at all. <laughs> put it on a sausage. Put it on a sausage, please. <laughs> put it on a sausage. Um, so that was that was uh, the second aspect of what led to the protest. But the biggest story, which I don't think a lot of people are talking about, is again. The story that we share as well, after the Asian financial crisis in 1997, um, Korea went uh, from, they started like neoliberal policies, man. That's where it all started. So now as a result of the financial crisis, they started injecting money into these big institutions, these corporate institutions in Korea. So like, Jordan, you would probably, because you've lived there, and I, I'm just literally going by like book pages here, but like <laughs> Samsung and Hyundai have massive control over the Korean economy now. Oh yeah, and, and you've politics. seen Blade Runner. <laughs> Samsung is the Tyrell Corporation. Just owns everything there. E any anything, it'll just be like Samsung presents turtle bowls, little lollies. It also presents Kia Motors. <laughs> as in they supply a lot of things to even other companies that are competing with them, like LG and stuff like that. They basically say to them, we're going to allow you to be this big. And again, because Koreans are just so obedient, they're just like, okay. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's kind of the, yeah, that's that's the juice there is, is uh, yeah, the guy that is Samsung, the, the guy that heads Samsung there is the real power in Korea. Yeah, and that's that's what that's what made this issue bigger, which is why if you remember, Samsung was the one that donated to that fortune tellers foundation as well. It all ties in. So the Korean people are basically just saying that this is insane. These corporate houses have way too much power. There's growing inequality, which is true again. Uh, young people can't get a house there. Can't their get their version of our housing crisis, where it's just uh, oh, so hard to buy a house in Sydney. Well, why don't you live in Lithgow? Because Lithgow sucks. <laughs> it's the whole country there. And everybody lives in these really Soviet style apartments where on the side of each of these allotted blocks that I don't know if anybody outside of Sydney listens to this, and I assume you do, so sucked into you for not knowing this. But there is, uh, you know, the, the suicide flats in, in Alexandria, just the most depressing cinder oh, yeah. block. You, you can tell that as soon as you walk in, there's going to be no natural light and this uh, really Nazi light at the top of it. <laughs> And look at the top, that's every, that's pretty much all housing in Korea. And that is unbelievably unaffordable. And it's not like here, where you get 20 bucks an hour, $3 an hour minimum wage there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty shit. So what Korean economy has, has done now is basically give too much importance to these big corporations. And they're massive, they're huge, like they're all over the world, like Samsung, you can imagine, right? Uh, but they haven't paid attention to like startups and uh, small businesses. Just like put all after the financial crisis, they put all of their energy on these because that's where the money was coming from, and that's led to.
like the the Korean society is now dissatisfied with the current structure of things, understandably so. Yeah, it's not even a dream there to start a yeah. startup in Korea. I was telling that to everybody. You know how when you talk to most hot shots in university that are wearing Tarakash with three buttons undone, <laughs> king of the campus, that guy always has an idea for an app that's going to change nothing but make him a lot of money. That doesn't exist in Korea. Everybody there is just like, it's my dream to work for Samsung. Exactly. Nobody has that dream here, right? It, nobody here, like, from the time they're a baby is just like, one of these days looking at a sign for AMP. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you want to be. Maybe you want to build your own A and P. Yeah, that, 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 that would be your dream, dude. Yeah. Like, if you if you want to, like, if you're a kid in Australia and just got like a hundred percent in HSC, and like your dream is to be the CEO of I don't know Westpac or something, like it's understandable. But how shit of a dream is that? Yeah, it's not good. It's not big enough. It's not big enough. We would, big, they're not even thinking that. They're just like, it'd be great to be a clerk for a boss <laughs> of Sam's. <laughs> You know, that tells you a lot about the society at the moment, so that clearly needs to change. And and it's not it's not that the population is being unreasonable and this is what's required. Like, uh, Korea needs to change its economy. This is not going to work in the long term. So they do need to spend a lot of resources on startups and making, like basically creating a level playing field. And this, this fucking takeover from like Samsung, LG, Hyundai, is, is out of control now and so that's actually my opinion is that's the crux of the the protest um, they Koreans will say that it's about a fortune teller um, but it all manifests to like this post fi Asian financial crisis economic structure of society that's what the that's what that's what they need to change and um, so I guess update is that the uh, president uh, president Park has now been impeached there's no, there, I don't think there's a new president as yet. As well, they're having an election, I think, next year. Yeah, and I think meanwhile, there may, I don't know how their constitution works, but meanwhile, there might be like a, either a caretaker president or a president from uh, Miss Park's party. Like, kind of like after Abbott is disqualified, Malcolm Turnbull will become the president. I can guarantee that the caretaker president. looks like that mole rat in Kim Possible. That just sort of talks, but doesn't really just be like, mm, Doritos. I bet you yeah. it looks like that. Yeah. They're always that. It, all the politicians that you ever see in South Korea that are duking it out, they always seem to have a. Uh, they're, they're very skinny, but it seems like they've got enough skin for a fat man. On them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, I, I actually it's don't like know. It's like the wrong you. suit for them. <laughs> the wrong skin suit. Yeah. Downgrade. Down please. Down. So I actually don't know how that actually works. I don't know if there's going to be okay, but either way, she's gone. But again, like she wasn't the source of the problem. If you really think about it, uh, they would need to bring massive reforms to their. Uh, Having said that, though, apparently she's an extremely inept leader. Yeah, I, well, she's, she's very unaffected. Yeah, because the only reason why she is there is because of her father. Um, yeah, she's the yeah. she's the Paris Hilton of Korean politics. What, you, your last name, Pak, which a tenth of Korea owns anyway. Everybody's yeah, got it's like ten fucking names in South Korea. Miss Park. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Miss Park, Miss Lee. You know what's great about Lee in South Korea? Yeah. If you have the name Lee, you get a scholarship into universities. It's, it's a, not a great scholarship, but nonetheless, you get some form of money taken off your tuition fees purely because it's the name of royalty. That spans back thousands of years. I love those little tidbits of society. There's so many points in your life where you walk up to somebody and they're saying, I can trace my origins all the way back to Oliver Cromwell and stuff. And it's just like, y yeah, but you're not. You're not Oliver Cromwell, are you? You're a sham. You're, you're a damn seed from a tree that grew great. And you're a sapling. And you know you're going to be a sapling the rest of your life. You're going to die and wither in the sun. Just... <laughs> We all know this looking at you. You're eating cheesos. Like, Oliver Cromwell never ate cheesels. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the sort of the crux of South Korean politics at the moment. So, um, cheesels. <laughs> Jesus, that's, the, right. that, that's the crux. That's it. That's the crux of it. But on top of that as well, apparently there's another element to this, which is that the South Korean newspapers, there's three of them, and if you thought that 
Rupert Murdoch was bad. Holy crap. These guys apparently rule Korea with an iron fist, and it's just known in the ether there. As in, <clears throat> he won't ever say, sorry, uh, uh, Rupert Murdoch won't ever tell you outright that I'm a kingmaker. He'll always say, well, we just put forward the faction we uh, presented in a way that, uh, it, look, in short, just vote Tony Abbott, you know, he, he'll do that. But there, they outright say, no, we decide who the Prime Minister is. I mean, who the President is. And so, apparently, at the end of every term, because they're only in for five years, I think, and you can only have one term, it's sort of like Mexico, except for it has six years there. And Mexico's a shithole. I'd much rather live in South Korea. Uh, it's great. You, you've got to go there. Really, you've got to experience the culture. Um, but they are, uh, yeah, apparently, on the last year of their term, it doesn't matter who's in power, they just bring out all of their skeletons from the closet, which causes these mass, this mass upheaval. And they've had to resign. Every, every president has had to resign except for the last one, which was Im Yong Bark, who, man, speaking of mole rats, guys, Google that guy. <laughs> Holy crap. And they, they killed themselves as well. There's been like a few, like, a, a, I think it was in the mid 2000s that a Korean prime minister, again, the same progression happened. He was. Uh, blamed by the media for corruption charges and he eventually shot himself and like he wrote a note saying like maybe this will prove my innocence I remember this that and apparently while he was there oh, oh, the same thing with everybody else right it was it was exactly the same as when we traded in Kevin Rudd for Tony Abbott and everyone was going he bloody he's so unstable and then as soon as he left we're like man what the fuck were we thinking this guy can speak Chinese Tony Abbott can barely speak English <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're like, it, it was just like a, everybody misses that guy now. Apparently, he's just seen as a as one of the greatest presidents they ever had. And Is again, he, I don't, again, I don't that, yeah. he was from the centre left party there, uh, so he was their version of the Labour Party. I can't remember what they're called. They have the stupidest names. It's like when you look at K-pop, yeah, and you look at their names translated to English, and it's not even translated to English, they just pick stupid words from English and call them that, like Wonder Girls, Super Junior, and it's like, dude, are you, are you competing with High Five? <laughs> Why are you all dancing around really slowly? <laughs> you, it, to me, you look like children's entertainers. <laughs> so, but they are, yeah, but it's the same with them, that apparently they're, they're just called like lame names that you hear in university politics, like Rise Up and Sun First, they're called that. They're not called like the Conservative Party and the uh, Workers Party, and they're not called those kind of things. Mm. It's really weird gimmicky names. Yeah. Um, so yeah, apparently he tried to help the poor in some small way. We're talking Bill Clinton trying to help the poor here, so <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Nothing. But that was just way too much for the ruling elite of Korea. And so they really went after him. So usually they just go after the actual president and just bring out all his skeletons. But these guys went dirty, man. They went through his whole family. Yeah. And so he felt really responsible for it because he just crushed the entire family name. So he did the most honourable thing and killed himself, which is just so rife throughout South Korea and Japan. It's kind of like, yeah, here, killing yourself is always seen as the coward's way out, worst thing ever, there, it barely to kill yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's honourable. Samurai <laughs> would kill themselves, like, you can't get more honourable sa than Samurai. Yeah, and I reckon they've got it right, man. I reckon, like, I okay, yeah, I, don't, I don't want people to kill themselves, obviously. I've, I've had my moments, but like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all have. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, you know, like in general, like the, the, the anger subsides you don't, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, I, I honestly think that yeah, it's not there's nothing cowardly about killing yourself, right? That I, I reckon like if it, yeah. I reckon my hand would be shaking while I did it. This guy's a this guy's a true patriot. <laughs> true Family patriot. Yeah, we're just yeah, on a national just... level, man, just take it over. You're like way better than Im Yong Bak. Im Yong Bak is uh, he'd be Let's just put it this way, right? You know how John Howard and George Bush were great friends? I'm pretty sure Ian Young Buck and George Bush were even better friends. <laughs> they loved each other. Okay, so that was, that was, I think we should probably tell them Miss Love is supposed to be here. <laughs> this, <laughs> we have second it. strike two. Second strike and he will get as many strikes as he wants. That's the thing. We're, you can't stay mad at him. Yeah. He, like, we haven't taken him out. Being mad at a sack of potatoes for not being corn. What did you expect? Obviously, yeah. <laughs> just make some damn chips when you can. And 
yeah, a, mo a more apt analogy would be he's a sack of mouldy potatoes. So just being like, that looks dud, that one's done. Oh, here we go, that one's here eatable. Go. So hopefully we get like a nice, good potato for mm -hmm. next episode and like we'll try to get that guy to... He's... <coughs> he, he, why? What's his excuse this time? Actually, it is pretty, it is pretty legitimate this time. The last excuse was just horrendous, which was, dude, I forgot what day it is. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you're in, you're in your late twenties. For Christ's sake, get your <laughs> so, life together. Yeah. That is a five-year-old's problem. <laughs> uh, this time, though, he is moving house, and he is moving to Lithgow. Yeah. So he will be coming back to Holsworthy, but just let that sink in. If anybody in the comment section here, I don't want you to not convince Miss Love to do this because if you see the man, you realise this man needs to be farming something on a mass scale, <laughs> yes. one crop. He's just, and he's not great at filming, getting that crop, and he's always getting ripped off by coals, <laughs> and he sort of knows it, but he doesn't know to what extent. And he's like, he's, 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 uh, he's like, I'm gonna just go to Woolies if you don't do this, as if they're gonna offer a better rate. Anyway, <laughs> ah, so... Ah, yeah, but put in the comment section your experiences of Lithgo, please. Yeah, if you have been there. Alright, so, that was it for South Korea. If this, is, if this episode does well, I guess we could go into, like, the history of Korea, North and South. That would be some, if, if you I'd, guys I'd be game. Them. I'd be very game. And I bet you as soon as we said that, because everybody just goes, yeah, 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 as soon as you was happy. North Korea? Yeah, North. North Korea. Yeah, what we could talk about you, North Korea as well. You bloody refugees from Vice. <laughs> Don't you think that's most of the people here just being like, man, Vice is so shit these days, yeah. fuck that, that they'd come onto this because it says something about internet. That, that was your only, come on, be honest, that was your only uh, association with politics outside of America and Australia, wasn't it? Just every time Vice would be going like, dude, how fucked up is the Congo? Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. But funny. like, man, you, you're, not, you're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Thanks for joining us. See, See you, you guys. Week. Bye.